Welcome to this week's online service. Today we mark the beginning of a new year and we are also celebrating Epiphany. Glorious Lord, we, your sons and daughters, come together into your kingly presence. We lift our eyes to you, seeking your guiding light and offering up our gifts of worship and praise. Let's sing our opening hymn, We Three Kings. Let us pray. Father God, full of wisdom and power, whose mighty arm stretches over all the earth, we bow down in humble adoration. Holy Saviour, full of grace, lighting up our world, we bow down in humble adoration. Spirit of the living God, full of the boundless riches available to us in Christ, we bow down in humble adoration. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, three in one, we bow down in humble adoration, open to your direction. Lord, 
just as the wise men set out into new territory in search of you. Help us to step out of life's narrow tramlines. Forgive us for seeking you out only in areas we know and in which we are comfortable. In their day, the wise men were outsiders, yet were guided by a star and spoken to in a dream. Their steps directed for your purpose. Forgive us when we fail to see or even dismiss your leading from unexpected places and unlikely people. Lord, forgive us. Widen our vision and expand our minds to search and discern you in all places and people that we may be drawn closer to you. Amen. And we say together the words of Isaiah from chapter 60, verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The visit of the wise men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went to the star that, that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure, treasure chests, they offered him gold, gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. In Matthew's account of the birth of Jesus, 
The only visitors mentioned are the Magi, or the wise men. They had observed his star at its rising, and had journeyed to pay homage to the King of the Jews. In the passage that we read together, when Isaiah spoke about the light, he was giving a vision of hope for the future to the people who were returning from exile to Jerusalem. Matthew wants us to understand the birth of Jesus as the coming of that light into the world, and the wise men as the first of those from other nations to be drawn to the light. The star that the wise men saw led them to a new place, but their journey also led them to a new understanding. We aren't told what their religious beliefs were, only that they saw meaning in the movements of the stars, but they naturally expected a new king to be born in a palace. When the star finally stopped, they must have been very surprised at where it had led them. They found an ordinary working-class family, a young mother and a carpenter father. They lived, Matthew tells us, in a house in Bethlehem, far from the wealth and status of Herod's court. But the wise men must have recognised something in the baby Jesus that led them to kneel before him and present him with their gifts. They were also able to look past the humble surroundings because God's light was shining in that place. It's funny how light can make things look different. If you've ever been to the National Media Museum in Bradford, you may have seen a picture of a fantasy landscape which is shown under red, green and blue lights. For each colour, you can see different things in the picture, so much so that it seems like a different picture altogether. In the same way, artists and photographers can spend many years waiting for the perfect light in which to capture a particular view. Mountains can look terrifying and threatening one day, and beautiful and peaceful the next. Darkness and shadow can create menacing monsters in a child's bedroom, but the light of dawn reduces them to ordinary objects once again. In a similar way, if we allow God's light to shine in our lives, it can change us and our perspective on life and the world. Then again, light or usually only shows us what things are like on the outside. We see shapes and colours because of the way light is reflected by objects. Light usually refers to the electromagnetic radiation that is visible to the human eye, in a spectrum from violet through to red. At shorter wavelengths there is ultraviolet light, and below that are X-rays. Because of their extremely short wavelength, X-rays can penetrate objects and allow us to produce an image of what is inside, for example the bones of the body, or the items in a suitcase. So perhaps God's light should be compared to X-rays rather than visible light. It shines through and shows us the inner reality of things, rather than what is on the surface. We should try to see each person or situation with God's light, seeking a deeper understanding rather than jumping to shallow conclusions. The simple message of Matthew's nativity story is that Jesus is God's light, come into the world at Christmas. And the story invites us to ask how that light might illuminate our lives in the coming year. 
Amen. Let us pray for the year ahead, that all things may be made new by God's grace. God of peace, we pray for the world. Set your peace in the hearts of men and women, that the nations of the world may learn to live as members of one family and children of one God and Father, to the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, we pray for worldly rulers and governments. Make all who exercise power over others to be defenders of liberty and champions of justice, and so rule in their hearts that they may also be lovers and makers of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth, we pray for society. Help us to understand the causes of our social tensions and unrest. Open our eyes to economic wrongs and racial bias. Deepen our concern for the poor, the elderly, the disabled. Stir in us a sense of responsibility one for another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for our community. Make us mindful of the people we live alongside those who share in the activities of the community, those who are at its core, and those who feel on the edge. Help us to make our contribution to the community and to learn to be good neighbours, that by love we may serve one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our families. Sustain and comfort them in times of need. Bring healing in times of division and tension. Increase in us mutual understanding, tolerance, patience and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for those in need. Give relief to those in pain, friendship to those who are alone, reassurance to those in doubt or distress of mind. And may our love be so strong that seeing need, we may never pass by on the other side. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, we pray for the church. Guide and direct us as we look to be your church for the present and the future. Restore our faith and vision. Renew our energies and love. Revive your people to new life and power. And may we live and speak for Christ in the world he came to save for the sake of his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The things that we have prayed for, loving God, give us grace also to work for. And in the purposes of your love, answer our prayers as may be best for us and for those for whom we have prayed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to sing the hymn, as with gladness.
has begun. Let us leave behind all that is past and walk together into the future. Let us trust in the God of new beginnings and worship the God of fresh hopes. Now may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all for evermore. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please join us again next week.